showed me what looks like a genuine mistranslation in the King James Bible, and he was showing me Acts chapter 12, I think it's verse 4, where it says the word Easter. Mm -hmm. Well, he said that's Pascha, the Greek word Pascha shows up 29 times in the New Testament, and every time it's translated as Passover, mm -hmm. except for this one time in Acts chapter 12, yeah. it's Easter which looks like a mistranslation, and he said you should have known that, but I mean, is that true that the word Pascha shows up 29 times in the yeah. New Testament? Yeah, 29 times it appears in the New Testament, and 28 times it's translated Passover, and the one time that it's not is Easter right here in Acts chapter 12. But I mean, isn't that a mistranslation then? Or? <laughs> no, actually it's one of the strongest evidences, Justin, of why you want a King James Bible and nothing else. And long before it was associated with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Easter was a pagan holiday. It had a female deity known as the Queen of Heaven, uh, it was, uh, her name was Astarte or Estar. Uh, it was a celebration of the earth regenerating itself after a tough winter when everything was dead. And because it was a, about regeneration, the symbols were an egg and a rabbit, and it was associated with the vernal equinox as far as a date. So every year the date changed. Uh, it can happen anywhere between March 22nd and April 25th. So it was a pagan holiday long before it was ever associated with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, the information I just gave you comes from a source called Hyssop's Two Babylons, which is a great historic source, and it's all accurate. But there's a problem, and the problem is it's not an inspired book. Now, I'm always hammering you guys in class about what our final authority is. What is it? The Bible. The Bible is our final authority in all matters of faith and practice. We may go to something like Hyssop's Two Babylons just for some information that the Bible doesn't have, historic information, but it's not inspired. We need to finish this. We need to finish all studies with the authority of Scripture. So we need to see what the Bible has to say about Easter. Actually, we need to see what the Bible says about the Passover and the Days of Unleavened Bread. Because Peter was arrested during those Days of Unleavened Bread. And we need to see what that relationship is, and the Bible is the only place we're going to find that. Here, have a seat. Now, the first Passover was found in Exodus chapter 12. And it tells us that it was in the first month, which is, according to Exodus chapter 13, verse 4, the month of Abib. It was on the 14th day of the month, the Lord passed over. Now, the Lord only passed over Egypt and killed the firstborn one night, not seven, not eight. Keep that in mind for later. And then the next day, on the 15th to the 21st, are what the Bible calls the days of unleavened bread. I, I, I kind of get what you're saying. It's just not very clear. Well, that's why we go back to the Bible for our final authority. Look at Leviticus chapter 23. Look at verse 5. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. That's pretty plain, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Look at the next verse. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. Now, go to Numbers chapter 28. In verse 16, And in the 14th day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. Verse 17, and in the 15th day of this month is the feast, seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. By the way, you remember how the, the date for Easter changes? Mm -hmm. The date for the Passover never changes. It does not move from year to year. In Numbers chapter 9, the Bible tells what the children of Israel did. They kept the Passover, the, the next Passover, the first one out of Egypt. One year later after they left, they kept it on Abib 14, and on the 15th to the 21st, they kept the days of unleavened bread. Well, I heard somewhere that all eight days together were considered the Passover, Abib 14 through 21. So Herod, maybe there were some days left over. You know, Herod was waiting for, you know, like after the Passover. Waiting the last few days of the Passover waiting to the be last few, yeah. The people that don't like the King James Bible make it up as they go. There is nothing in Scripture that says that. Now, Justin, if somebody says in Bible times or in the Bible, however they want to say it, if they say all eight days are called the Passover, then there should be a, a verse that they got that from. Where did they get that? Either made it up in their mind or they got it from the Bible. You have a right to say, show me that in the Bible. Show me someplace in the Bible where it says all eight days are called the Passover. Fact is, not found anywhere. Hmm. Fact is, just the opposite. Take a look at Numbers chapter 33. Now, this is not the opinion of a man. This is not my opinion, by the way. This is why, this is why I've always told you. The Bible is our final authority, not Sam Gipp, not any, anybody else, no scholar. This is the authority, and look what it says in verse 3. Numbers 33, 3, it says, talking about the children of Israel getting out of Egypt. And they departed from Ramses in the first month, on the 15th day of the first month, on the morrow, 
after the Passover. Hmm. There is scriptural authority that the 15th of Abib, the Passover is already passed. It's very similar if they arrested a noted criminal on December 28th and the news people asked the sheriff, when are you going to reign him? And he said, after Christmas. But he was arrested after Christmas. But the next coming holiday, they'd say, after New Year's. We arrested him after Christmas. We're waiting till after New Year's. So the King James Bible is the only Bible that correctly translates that 28 times Passover and one time Easter. By the way, in Greece, when Greeks say Easter's coming, Pascha is the word they use. Well, I thought I saw on a Jewish calendar that that whole week, all eight days, is, is called the, the Pascal week? Or? Yeah, I've seen that too. But remember, that's not the inspired Bible. That's what the Jews say. And these are the guys that didn't recognize their Messiah when he was standing right in front of them. I don't think I'm going to worry about what they thought of the, of, of the Passover. You believe that Jesus Christ was God? Yeah. All right. Was he ever wrong? No. Okay, do you think he was ever just maybe mistaken? Never. Never. The night he was arrested, he sent two of his disciples he said, go tell that man, I want that upper room to keep the Passover with my disciples. Then he was arrested that night and he was dead the next day. So if the Passover in the Bible was eight days, he never did what he said he was going to do. He never kept the Passover. But if the Passover is one day, he did it and then it was taken care of. So Justin, the Passover is Abel 14. 15 through 21 are the days of unleavened bread. Peter was arrested right in there somewhere. So the Passover was already passed. Herod couldn't be waiting for something to pass that was already passed. He was waiting for the future, Easter, to pass. And our King James Bible has it right. Well, that saddles that, but uh, kind of an, another topic. I do have one more question for you. You know something, Justin? I, I might have the answer to whatever question you have. I might not. But even if I do, I'm not gonna answer that question. The reason I'm not going to answer that question is very simple. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you had 100 legitimate questions about the King James Bible, I'll guarantee you, you could never have more than 99 of them answered. Because the moment you have your last question answered, you would believe it by sight and not by faith. Well, Dr. Gipp, are, are you saying that God wants me to be insecure? Because, well, like Mark Twain once said, that faith is... Uh, man believing in something he knows ain't so. And, and so you're kind of, it feels like you're saying that if, as long as you have faith, that the, the answers don't really matter. God doesn't want you to be insecure. God wants you to trust him. Let me show you something. I just, just picked this up on the internet the other day. This is, this is one of the world's leading textual critics. This guy's up in the top five. He said the original New Testament text is found somewhere in the manuscripts that have been known for quite some time. Does that sound like faith? or science. Well, that sounds like faith. <laughs> it's absolute faith. So they have faith and so do we. They want you to put your faith in a bunch of finite men who travel around the world looking at the manuscripts, putting them on the internet and saying somewhere out there in almost 6,000 manuscripts the Word of God is. Not that you could read even one of them or access them. I don't care if the pictures were all over the internet. You still couldn't read what you were looking at. But you don't have the education, so you need faith. The fact is, you never needed me the whole time. I like to answer questions. I'm glad to help in any way I can. But didn't you say you were raised in a Christian home? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, you've had the answer in your hand all the time. Justin, the Bible says that, that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. We need to understand that what Paul is conveying to Timothy is the idea that some things can only be understood by faith. We know by faith what we cannot know by the intellect. All the brains in the world wouldn't give you the ability to comprehend the truths that are in that book because they're not obtained that way. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. We know he's not teaching that you can only trust Christ and be born again as a child. 
He's not talking about an age. He's talking about an attitude. And the attitude of a child is an attitude of faith. A child will believe simply because of who said something. Can I tell you how to know the King James Bible is the Word of God? Not with all the evidence and the arguments. It has nothing to do with it. Somewhere tonight, maybe in your study, on your knees, why don't you just say, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. 